Hi, I'm Matt Schwarzman. Welcome to episode three of my video journal. This one's entitled, Everyone's Viewpoint is Like Part of a Wheel. And this is my interview with folks from the Letcher County Culture Hub. The Letcher County Culture Hub is a grassroots coalition of community organizations located in the coal fields of southeastern Kentucky. It's a region known mainly for its extreme economic poverty, but as we're going to find out, it's also a place of great wealth. The purpose of this journal is twofold. First, to develop a conversation among practitioners and thinkers about cultural activism as an approach to education, but secondly, to use what we learn to create better classrooms and community programs. The book we use as a reference for the conversation is The Beginner's Guide to Community-Based Arts. Yes, I am the co-author, along with two amazing cartoonists, Keith Knight and Ellen Forney. Uh, Yes, I make $3 a copy for every one that you buy, but that's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing it because, as proud of the book as I am, it was designed to be the beginning of a conversation, not the end. And so I'm hoping that this journal format might be a good way to go the next step. So after you watch the video, please respond on the YouTube page and share how your work compares and contrasts with the work we're going to discuss. The Beginner's Guide takes the reader on a journey to to visit 10 cultural activists working in communities across the country. Each of these artists leaves us with a methodological tip, and together these tips represent the five territories of the cultural activist journey. Contact, research, action, feedback, and teaching. One of the 10 stories is about a video project called Coal Bucket Outlaw by a man named Tom Hansel. The goal of his project was to alert people to the economic, environmental, and public safety impact of coal haul trucking in the Appalachian region. But rather than just tell one side of the story, Tom decided to do a very unusual thing. He told everyone's story. Truckers, police officers, environmental activists, and others in the community that were involved and affected by the issue. As Tom put it, only by hearing from everyone can a community really move forward. Now, during this interview, you're going to hear from another group of people from the same place that have taken the same idea in a very different direction. They're too humble to talk about it much during our interview, but the Letcher County Culture Hub folks and their partners have accomplished some really amazing things since the coalition was founded in 2015. They've incubated a catering business, a bakery, a solar panel initiative. They've restored a historic bluegrass festival and square dance. They've collected dozens of local stories to be used in plays and media coverage. And they've created over 100 contract and permanent jobs in the process. Both Coal Bucket Outlaw and the Letcher County Culture Hub come out of a single amazing multidisciplinary arts center in Whitesburg, Kentucky called Apple Shop. Founded in 1969 as part of the War on Poverty, Apple Shop is a collectively run artist cooperative that has inspired thousands of cultural activists. What's even cooler is that Letcher County is just one of four culture hubs that Apple Shop is working with around the country as part of its Performing Our Future project. But that'll have to be for another story. Without further ado, here are excerpts from my interview with Gwen Johnson and Ben Fink of the Letcher County Culture Hub in Whitesburg, Kentucky. Hey, Ben and Gwen. Uh, I do like the rhyme of that, I have to say, every time I say it out loud. Thank you for a vaudeville act. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think you should consider a vaudeville act. It's good. I would certainly pay uh, for a ticket. Um, So uh, thank you for joining us, joining me uh, in this journey. And uh, we're going to be talking about Apple Shop 
and uh, performing our future. And um, it's going to be in reference to the Tom Hansel and Apple Shop story from the Beginner's Guide to Community-Based Arts. Tom Hansel, great guy. Yeah, yeah. Do you know him too, Gwen? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think highly of him. Yeah, <laughs> good, excellent. So um, would one or both of you take the lead in telling us in a couple sentences about what the Letcher County uh, Culture Hub is? So the Letcher County Culture Hub is a collaboration between about 20 or so partners from a lot of different sectors of the county. So we've got volunteer fire departments, we've got the community centers, um, we got a couple of businesses, we just got a Letcher County Farmers Market is a part of it. Um, and um, there's Epicenter Arts Group. And what do you do? What's your mission? Well, our mission is to build community wealth. We've got a wealth of uh, culture and a lot of latent assets. And so we're trying to use what we can to rebuild and transition from coal to whatever it's going to be. One thing that is distinctive about the partners in the culture hub as opposed to you know people say well you know there's a lot of stakeholder groups where different partners come together the difference is that all of these partners are community led you notice we did not say the school system we did not say the government we did not say the big you know healthcare providers the big businesses the big institutions it's not that those aren't important it's not and it's not that we don't work with them but they aren't the base. The base, the we who does work with them, is community-led organizations. What Roadside Theater, the part of Apple Shop that I work for, we call community centers of power, um, where the community is not only present, but is in charge. And so Hemp Hill Community Center, where we're sitting, um, and where Gwen reigns uh, supreme, is one of those community centers of power. You walk in the door, everybody is making together. It's not a service provider. There's not a desk we're sitting behind and you know, the poor people get the services and the rich people are running things. Everybody goes everywhere. There's, you know, there's stuff on the walls representing generations of families and legacies. And this is just a place that the community owns and operates and keeps the wealth they make. We had never been able to think big because there was a limit to what we could do because we didn't own anything that we were working with or for. And so, um, every, you know, in an extra extractive economy, it's just held away, uh, at, especially if it's owned by someone outside the region, which typically the coal companies have always been. So, um, we kind of had to hook up with some folks like Ben, who was able to dream bigger. Uh, I, I had never been able to expand my imagination into dreaming about something that we didn't have the money in our purse for right at that moment. And so, so kind of what in my um, way of thinking, what has happened here as a result of the partnerships with Apple Shop, um, with Roadside Theater, with uh, the Lecture County Culture Hub, and with Performing Our Future, is that we have been able to tap in to this collective uh, way of thinking. A thing that we say at Apple Shop is we don't give anybody a voice. People are speaking. All we do is amplify that voice, mm -hmm. amplify it through filmmaking and theater and radio and all the other stuff that we do. But the people are already speaking. We just got solar panels on top of this place and we house the Letcher County Coal Miners Monument. So we were so fearful that we would piss the coal miners off that we did an impromptu survey with coal miners before we proposed that project to the community. Uh, I met with several of them, but without fail, every one of them said something like this, honey, the train's pulled out and it looks like this solar thing could benefit all of us. I'd like to have them on my house. 
So if y'all can get them things, by all means, y'all go ahead and get them. People come at this question, this, this solar energy project from a lot of different directions. You know, some people, this is, we got to save the planet and, you know, the, 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 the climate is a crisis and we got to address it now. Other people say, we are not able to pay our electric bills. Um, and that's a crisis because our center is going to close. People ask, how come Apple Shop, a cultural center, is working on solar energy? Well, places like Hemp Hill that are keeping our cultural traditions alive are closing their doors because they can't pay their power bill. In Tom's story, he goes around the circle in order to figure out what the source of a problem is. You, on the other hand, had a su proposed solution, but you didn't want to implement it until you had talked to people so that they could have input into your, uh, what you end up, ended up doing. That's a really nice uh, reflection. Not the same thing, but, but closely related to this idea of, of meeting people where they're at. So the story circle is the literalizing of that wheel as a metaphor. It is literally people sit together and what they primarily do is listen. Some of us say that a story circle is almost misnamed because it's, it's really a listening circle. Mm -hmm. And the point is that everybody is heard. And so often we have experienced people who in other contexts are afraid to speak um, or afraid to listen. In a story circle, everybody knows they're gonna get to be heard and everybody knows they gotta listen. It is basically an attempt to create in a vastly unequal world, a space where everybody is equal for that time. And story circles at certain key moments have been hugely important in creating that common story. Communities know what they need. And so many times agencies and um, teachers, uh, people who don't know the community come in and they just assume from whatever the media's told them, whatever they read, watched on TV, because they don't know what the people need and they don't know what the people want. And if somebody comes to this community and tries to shove something down our throat that we're not wanting, then as soon as they go out the door, well, that's laid by the wayside and all their efforts are for nothing. Mm -hmm. Awesome, yep. So here at Hempel Community Center, we try, we're trying to have a brave space. And I think that is, um, that's kind of embracing what seems to me to be the view of most of our young folks, is they want a place to belong. And they, they don't want somebody trying to shove their notion down their throat. They want, they want their own freedom to think for themselves. Another dimension to that is I think a lot of people, not just young people, but including young people, think about activism, think about political work, think about justice work as you get the people who agree with you together and you go do something and you which usually involves fighting the other people who don't, right? That is the opposite of the way that we work. The way that we work, so a hate-free zone some people interpret that to mean anybody who has political beliefs that I believe are hateful can't be here because you're making me unsafe. That is not what Hemphill Community Center is. Mm -hmm. We got, you know, radical activists and we got cops and we got, you know, people who are left and right and old and young. And now if somebody starts acting in a hateful way, Gwen, uh, I have seen her in action. There is no tolerance for that. But if you come in just you believe something, you gotta not just be tolerated, but invited and welcomed in. And I will say, as a self-described communist Jew from the Northeast, I have been so grateful that this community has done that for me. And I have learned a whole lot because I came here four years ago with all of the preconceptions that you could imagine that I may have. Well, thank you, brother. You do our, you do our people proud. Thank you. Gosh, I feel like I've been to uh, Letcher County for a few minutes today. I really do. Yeah, really come visit. Yeah. Peace.